embark on a journey to uncover the truth about some of the most enigmatic creatures of all time, Bigfoot, Mothman, and the Chupacabra. For centuries, people from around the world have reported sightings of these mysterious beings, each with its own unique characteristics and abilities. From the massive Bigfoot roaming the forests of the Pacific Northwest, to the mysterious winged Mothman terrorizing the skies of West Virginia, to the blood-sucking Chupacabra, we will delve into the history and science behind these legends. But will we uncover the truth, or be left with more questions than answers? Join us for an unforgettable adventure as we explore the unbelievable and the unexplained. For centuries, whispers of a massive, ape-like creature have echoed through the wilderness. Known as Bigfoot, this elusive being has captivated the minds of those who dare to seek the truth. We will delve into the depths of the mystery of Sasquatch, examining the evidence, the theories, and the individuals who have devoted their lives to uncovering the truth about this elusive creature. From ancient legends to recent sightings, we will explore the hidden history, the science, and the secrets surrounding this mysterious creature. Join us as we set out on a journey to uncover the truth about one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of our time. The legend of Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, has captivated people for generations, but its origins can be traced back to the indigenous cultures of North America, where the creature has been a part of folklore for centuries. Many Native American tribes have stories of a large, ape-like creature that inhabits the wilds of the Pacific Northwest. The creature is known by different names, such as Sasquatch in the Salish language, Stick Indian in the Chinook language, and Wild Man in the Haida language. These stories describe the creature as a powerful, an elusive being that is both feared and respected. It is said to possess supernatural powers and to be able to control the elements. Some stories tell of how the creature would steal women and children, while others tell of how it would help lost hunters find their way home. The Native Americans also believe that the Sasquatch is a protector of the forest and the animals that live there. They saw it as a guardian of the natural balance and would often leave offerings for it, such as food or tobacco. As the world outside of the native communities began to take notice of this mysterious creature, the 1920s and 1930s saw a rise of interest in the unknown and the unexplained, with the first compelling sightings of Bigfoot surfacing. These early reports would set the stage for the modern legend of the creature and would spark a debate that continues to this day. One of the earliest known reports of a Bigfoot sighting was in 1924, when a group of miners in the Ape Canyon area of Washington State claimed to have been attacked by a group of the creatures. According to the miners, the creatures were about seven feet tall, covered in hair, and had a strong, unpleasant odor. They claimed that the creatures had thrown rocks at their cabin, shattering windows and causing injuries. The miners were able to hold off the creatures with gunfire, but the incident left a lasting impression on them. In the following years, other reports of similar encounters began to surface in the Pacific Northwest. In 1926, a hunter in Oregon claimed to have seen a massive, ape-like creature while tracking a bear. He described the creature as standing over eight feet tall, with long, powerful arms and a wide barrel chest. The hunter was so startled by the sighting that he ran away, leaving his hunting gear behind. In 1933, a group of hikers in California's Sierra Nevada mountains reported seeing a creature that matched the description of a Bigfoot. They claimed that the creature was covered in dark fur and had a face that was a mix of human and ape. The hikers were so frightened by the encounter that they immediately left the area and never returned. These early sightings were met with skepticism by many, but they also sparked a wave of interest and curiosity about the creature. The story spread quickly, and soon the media began to take notice. In 1941, an article about the creature appeared in the San Francisco Examiner, and the creature was given the name Bigfoot. As the legend of Bigfoot grew, so did the number of sightings and encounters. In the 1940s and 1950s, reports of the creature came from all over the Pacific Northwest, from Washington and Oregon to California and British Columbia. Some of the most compelling reports came from experienced outdoorsmen, such as hunters and loggers, who claimed to have seen the creature up close. One such report came from a logger named Robert Patterson, who claimed to have had a face-to-face -face encounter with a Bigfoot in 1955. According to Patterson, he was working in the woods when he saw a creature standing on the other side of a clearing. He described the creature as standing about seven feet tall, with dark, shaggy hair and a face that was a mix of human and ape. Patterson claimed that the creature stared at him for a moment before turning and disappearing into the forest. Another compelling report came from a man named Jerry Crew, who claimed to have seen a Bigfoot while working on a construction site in 1958. 
crew described the creature as standing about eight feet tall, with long, powerful arms and a wide, arrow chest. He said that the creature had a face that was a mix of human and ape, and that it had deep-set eyes and a wide, flat nose. Crew claimed that the creature stared at him for a moment before turning and running away. These early sightings were not only significant because of the number of people who reported them, but also because of the consistency of the descriptions. Many of the witnesses described the creature as being tall, covered in hair with a human-like face and long arms. These descriptions would become the hallmark of the modern legend of Bigfoot. As the sightings continued, interest in the creature grew, and soon expeditions were organized in search of the creature. One of the most famous of these expeditions was led by Dr. Grover Krantz, a physical anthropologist from Washington State University in the 1970s. Krantz was convinced that the creature was a missing link in human evolution, and he spent years studying the creature's tracks and analyzing hair samples that were claimed to be from the creature. Krantz's research was met with skepticism by many in the scientific community, but it also helped to lend credibility to the idea that the creature could be a real animal. In the following years, many other researchers and organizations would join the search for the creature. Some used traditional methods, such as tracking and studying tracks and hair samples, while others used more modern technology, such as thermal imaging cameras and DNA analysis. Despite the numerous expeditions and research projects, however, no concrete evidence of the creature's existence has been found. Recent decades have seen a continuation of sightings and encounters with the creature, with many people coming forward to report their own experiences. These sightings have occurred all over North America, with the majority of them happening in the Pacific Northwest, but also in other regions, such as the Appalachians and the Great Lakes. In the late 20th century, the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization was established, which has been dedicated to the research and investigation of Bigfoot sightings and encounters. The BFRO has collected thousands of reports from witnesses and has organized numerous expeditions and research projects in an effort to find concrete evidence of the creature's existence. One of the most famous sightings was the Patterson-Gimlin film taken in 1967 by Roger Patterson and Robert Gimlin. The footage, which has been studied and debated for decades, shows a figure walking in the woods that some believe to be a Bigfoot. While many experts have argued that the footage is a hoax, Others believe it to be genuine and consider it to be one of the best pieces of evidence for the existence of the creature. In 2008, the Bigfoot DNA project was launched, with the goal of obtaining a DNA sample of the creature. Researchers collected hair, blood, and other samples from supposed Bigfoot sightings, and then analyzed the DNA. Though the results were inconclusive, and some of the samples were found to be from known animals, the project generated a lot of attention and interest in the creature. In recent years, there have been many reported sightings in various regions of North America, including in Texas, Florida, and even as far north as Canada. Many of these sightings have been captured on camera and have been shared on social media and news outlets. These videos have generated a lot of discussion and debate among those who believe in the creature's existence and those who are skeptical. As the legend of Bigfoot has grown, so has the search for concrete evidence of the creature's existence. Through the decades, Many pieces of evidence have been put forward as proof of the creature's existence, but none have been able to provide conclusive evidence. The Patterson-Gimlin film, shot in 1967, is one of the most famous pieces of evidence for the existence of Bigfoot. The footage, which lasts just under one minute, shows a figure walking in the woods that some believe to be a Sasquatch. The film was shot by Roger Patterson and Robert Gimlin while they were on a horseback expedition in the Bluff Creek area of Northern California an area known for its Bigfoot sightings. The footage shows a creature walking on two legs with a distinctive human-like gait. The creature is covered in hair with a distinctive hump on its back. The figure stops and turns towards the camera for a moment, giving a clear view of its face, which is described as a mix of human and ape-like features. The creature then continues on its way and disappears into the woods. Since its release, the Patterson-Gimlin film has been the subject of intense debate and scrutiny. Many experts have analyzed the footage and opinions are divided about its authenticity. Some argue that the film is a hoax, while others believe that it is genuine and that it shows a real, unknown creature. Those who believe in the authenticity of the film argue that the creature in the footage is anatomically consistent with what would be expected of a large primate. They point to the distinct gait, the muscle structure, and the movement of the creature's hair as evidence that it is not a man in a suit. They also point out that the film was shot in an area with a long history of Bigfoot sightings, and that the creature's appearance is consistent with the descriptions given by witnesses. On the other hand, 
Those who believe the film to be a hoax argue that the creature in the footage is too human-like to be a real animal. They point out that the figure's gait is too smooth and lacks the jerky movements that would be expected of a large primate. They also argue that the film is too short and that the creature is only shown from a distance, which makes it difficult to determine its true size and shape. In recent years, advances in technology have allowed for new analysis of the film. For example, a study in 2011 used 3D computer modeling to analyze the creature's anatomy and gait and concluded that the creature in the footage is unlikely to be a man in a suit. Another study in 2012 used forensic imaging techniques to analyze the film and found that the creature's hair moved in a way that is consistent with an animal and not a human in a suit. Despite the ongoing debate about its authenticity, the Patterson-Gimlin film remains one of the most famous pieces of evidence for the existence of Bigfoot, and it continues to fuel the debate about whether or not the creature is real. Another piece of evidence that has been put forward in the search for Bigfoot is the collection of casts of footprints that have been found in various locations throughout North America. These casts, which are made by pouring a liquid material into a footprint and allowing it to harden, provide a detailed and accurate representation of the original print. They have been studied by researchers, and while some argue that they are evidence of the creature's existence, others claim that they can be explained by known animals or hoaxes. The first known cast of a Bigfoot footprint was made in 1958 by a construction worker named Jerry Crew, who claimed to have seen the creature while working on a construction site in California. Crew made a cast of one of the footprints and sent it to a local newspaper, which then ran a story about the sighting. This event sparked a wave of interest in the creature, and soon other people began to report their own sightings and encounters. In the following years, many other casts of footprints were made and reported from various locations throughout North America. Some of the most famous casts were made in the Pacific Northwest, an area known for its high number of Bigfoot sightings. Many of these casts were made by experienced outdoorsmen, such as hunters and loggers, who claimed to have seen the creature up close. The casts of footprints have been analyzed by researchers and experts, who have looked for any unique characteristics that might distinguish them from known animal tracks. Some researchers have pointed out that the prints are larger than those of known animals and have unique dermal ridges and other features that are not found in other animal tracks. They argue that these unique characteristics are evidence of an unknown animal. However, others have argued that the casts of footprints can be explained by known animals or hoaxes. They point out that many of the prints have been found in areas where bears and other large animals are known to live and that the prints can be easily faked. They argue that the unique characteristics can be explained by natural variation and that there is no concrete evidence that the prints are from an unknown animal. In recent years, some researchers have used new technology such as 3D scanning and photogrammetry to analyze the footprints casts in greater detail. These methods allow us to make accurate measurements of the prints and to create 3D models that can be used to study the prints in more detail. These studies have revealed new insights about the prints but they have also generated new questions, and opinions are still divided as to whether the prints are evidence of an unknown animal or not. In the late 20th century, the search for concrete evidence of the existence of Bigfoot took on a new dimension with the launch of the Bigfoot DNA Project. The project, which was led by a group of researchers and scientists, aimed to obtain a DNA sample of the creature in order to determine once and for all if it was a real animal. The project began in the early 1990s when researchers collected hair blood, and other samples from supposed Bigfoot sightings. These samples were then analyzed in a lab using DNA sequencing techniques. The goal was to compare the DNA from the samples to that of known animals in order to determine if the creature was a previously unknown species. The results of the project were inconclusive, with the majority of samples found to be from known animals such as bears, deer, and even humans. However, a small number of samples were found to have DNA that could not be matched to any known species. These samples were considered to be possible evidence of a new species, but they were not enough to prove the existence of Bigfoot. Despite the inconclusive results, the Bigfoot DNA project generated a lot of attention and interest in the creature. The project was covered extensively in the media, and it sparked a renewed interest in the search for the creature. Many people were excited by the prospect of finally finding concrete evidence of the creature's existence, and the project helped to raise awareness about the ongoing search for Bigfoot. The project also helped to pave the way for future research on the creature. The methods used in the project, such as DNA analysis, have since been used in other studies on the creature. Additionally, the project helped to establish the importance of proper sample collection and handling in the search for the creature, which has been crucial in the ongoing search for concrete evidence of its existence. In the years following the launch of the Bigfoot DNA project, 
other researchers have also attempted to obtain DNA samples from supposed Bigfoot sightings. Some of these studies have used more advanced DNA sequencing techniques and have been able to obtain more detailed information from the samples. However, the results of these studies have also been inconclusive, and the question of whether or not the creature is a real animal remains unresolved. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the search for Bigfoot DNA continues, with researchers and scientists looking for new ways to obtain and analyze samples. Some have suggested that the use of next-generation DNA sequencing techniques, such as whole genome sequencing, may be able to provide more definitive answers about the creature's existence. However, the collection of DNA samples is not without its challenges. The creature is elusive, and sightings are rare, making it difficult to obtain fresh samples. Additionally, collecting samples from hair, blood, or saliva in the field is challenging, and samples can be easily contaminated or degraded, making it difficult to obtain quality DNA. In recent years, new technologies such as environmental DNA sampling have been developed, which can detect the presence of an organism by analyzing DNA present in the environment, such as in soil or water. These methods have been used successfully to detect the presence of rare and elusive species, and researchers hope that they may be able to provide new insights into the search for Bigfoot DNA. With the proliferation of the internet and social media, a flood of audio recordings and videos claimed to be of Bigfoot have been widely shared online, sparking renewed interest and debate about the existence of the creature. Many of these recordings have been captured by eyewitnesses, and they claim to be evidence of the creature's vocalizations and movements. However, despite the proliferation of these recordings, the majority of them have been found to be explainable by known animals or hoaxes. One of the most famous examples of an audio recording that was claimed to be a Bigfoot is the Sierra Sounds recordings. These recordings were made in the 1970s by an amateur researcher named Al Berry. Berry claimed that the recordings were of the creature's vocalizations, but they were later found to be hoaxes made by Berry himself. Another example is the Ohio Howl recordings, a series of audio recordings made in the 2000s by a researcher named Rick Dyer. Dyer claimed that the recordings were of the creature's vocalizations and that they provided evidence of its existence. However, the recordings were later found to be hoaxes created by Dyer and his team. More recently, videos and audio recordings have been captured by eyewitnesses using smartphones and other devices. These recordings are often shared on social media and YouTube, and they have generated a lot of interest and discussion among those who believe in the creature's existence. However, many of these recordings have been analyzed by experts and researchers and the majority of them have been found to be explainable by known animals or hoaxes. Some of these recordings have been found to be of known animals such as bears, wolves, and other wildlife. In many cases, the sounds and movements captured in the recordings can be easily explained by the behavior of these known animals. For example, the calls of coyotes and foxes, which are commonly found in North America, can sound similar to the supposed vocalizations of Bigfoot, and the movement of bears can be mistaken for the creature's gait. Others have been found to be hoaxes, either intentionally or unintentionally made by people. In some cases, people have used sound effects or manipulated recordings to create the impression of the creature's vocalizations. In other cases, people have misidentified known animals or natural sounds as the creature. Despite the fact that the majority of these recordings have been found to be explainable by known animals or hoaxes, some researchers and experts argue that a small number of them remain unexplained. These recordings are considered to be possible evidence of the creature's existence, but they are not considered to be conclusive evidence. While many scientists and researchers have approached the question of Bigfoot's existence from a biological perspective, others have looked to paranormal explanations for the creature's origins. These explanations include theories that Bigfoot is a supernatural or paranormal being, rather than a physical animal. One of the most popular paranormal explanations for Bigfoot is that it is a type of cryptid or hidden animal. Cryptozoology is the study of animals that are not recognized by modern science, and many cryptozoologists believe that Bigfoot fits into this category. They argue that the creature is a surviving member of an ancient primate species that has managed to evade detection by modern science. Cryptozoology is a field that seeks to discover and classify animals that are considered to be hidden or unknown by mainstream science. The study of cryptids is a controversial one, as it often relies on anecdotal evidence and lacks the scientific rigor of other fields of study. However, many cryptozoologists argue that it is important to investigate reports of unknown animals, as they may provide evidence of new species or previously unknown populations of known species. One of the arguments put forward by cryptozoologists is that Bigfoot is a surviving member of the genus Gigantopithecus, a large primate that lived in Asia and Africa until around 100,000 years ago. 
They suggest that a small population of this species may have migrated to North America and survived until the present day. They point to the similarities between the descriptions of Bigfoot and the reconstructed appearance of Gigantopithecus, such as large size and bipedalism, as evidence of this theory. Another argument is that the creature is a surviving member of the genus Paranthropus, a genus of extinct hominids that lived in Africa between 2.3 and 1.2 million years ago. They suggest that the creature could be a descendant of the Paranthropus robustus, which was a large, robust hominid with a large jaw and a skull with a sagittal crest. However, it's important to note that the majority of scientists and researchers reject the idea that Bigfoot is a surviving ancient primate species. They argue that there is no concrete evidence of such a creature's existence and that the sightings and encounters can be explained by known animals or hoaxes. They also point out that it is unlikely that a large primate species could have survived undetected for so long in an area that has been heavily populated and explored by humans. Another popular explanation for the existence of Bigfoot is that it is an extraterrestrial being. According to this theory, the creature is not from Earth but rather from another planet and has come to visit or even to live on our planet. Proponents of this theory argue that the creature's physical characteristics, such as its large size and hairiness, are consistent with what one might expect of an alien. They also point to the creature's ability to evade detection as evidence of its extraterrestrial origins. Furthermore, they argue that the creature's behavior and intelligence are also consistent with an extraterrestrial being. They point to the creature's supposed ability to communicate telepathically and to its supposed ability to disappear and reappear at will. They also argue that the creature's supposed intelligence and ability to understand human languages are evidence that it is not a primate but an intelligent extraterrestrial being. Another theory that has been proposed to explain the existence of Bigfoot is that it is a type of interdimensional being capable of moving between different dimensions or realms. They suggest that the creature is able to move between the physical and spiritual realms, and it is only occasionally seen in our world. The idea that Bigfoot is an interdimensional being is rooted in the belief that there are multiple dimensions or realms beyond our physical world, and that these realms are populated by beings that are able to move in and out of them. One of the arguments put forward by those who believe in this theory is that the creature's ability to appear and disappear quickly could be explained by it being able to move through different dimensions or realms. They point out that many people have reported seeing the creature and then it suddenly disappearing or appearing in a place it could not have physically traveled to in that time. There are also theories that Bigfoot is a type of spiritual entity, such as a shapeshifter or a guardian spirit. According to this theory, the creature is not a physical being at all, but rather a manifestation of spiritual energy or a spiritual being. Proponents of this theory argue that the creature's ability to evade detection and its sudden appearances and disappearances are consistent with a spiritual being. It's important to note that all of the paranormal explanations for Bigfoot are considered to be highly speculative and lack scientific evidence. They are not supported by mainstream science and are not taken seriously by most researchers and scientists. The search for the truth about Bigfoot continues, and while many scientists and researchers continue to explore the possibility of physical animal behind the sightings, Others are open to considering alternative explanations. Alien, spirit, or flesh and blood animal. For decades, the question has lingered. Does the elusive and enigmatic Bigfoot truly exist? Despite countless sightings, tracks, and evidence, the scientific community remains skeptical. But the legend of this mysterious creature has captivated the public imagination, sparking countless expeditions and searches, and becoming a topic of endless fascination and debate. But is the true appeal of Bigfoot in proving its existence, or in the thrill of the hunt? The idea of a flesh and blood animal, or perhaps an otherworldly spirit lurking in the wilderness, is tantalizing and alluring, evoking a sense of adventure and wonder, and reminding us of the mysteries that still exist in our world. As we continue to explore the wild and uncharted regions of our planet, the possibility of encountering a Sasquatch remains. Will we ever find concrete evidence of the creature's existence? Or will it forever remain shrouded in mystery and intrigue? Only time will tell. Deep in the heart of West Virginia, a creature of legend haunts the woods and marshes, the Mothman. Sightings of this mysterious being date back to the 1960s, but its origins and purpose remain a mystery. Join us as we delve into the history of the Mothman and the impact it has had on the small town of Point Pleasant. From eyewitness accounts to theories of government cover-ups, let us take you on an action-packed journey to uncover the truth behind one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of our time. Point Pleasant, a town located in the heart of West Virginia, 
is a peaceful place, known for its natural beauty and friendly community. But in the fall of 1966, this idyllic town would become the center of a strange and inexplicable phenomenon that would captivate the nation. The Mothman legend began when two young couples, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Mary Millette, reported seeing a large, winged creature while driving near an abandoned World War II munitions plant in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. The creature, which they described as being over six feet tall, with large red eyes and wings, chased their car as they drove away in terror. This initial sighting sparked a wave of similar encounters in the Point Pleasant area, with many residents reporting seeing the creature flying over their homes or chasing their cars. One of the most notable of these encounters was that of Deputy Sheriff Millard Halstead, who was on patrol one night when he saw the creature on the side of the road. Halstead described the creature as being over seven feet tall, with large red eyes and a wingspan of at least 10 feet. The encounters with the Mothman continued for several months, with witnesses reporting the creature in various locations throughout the Point Pleasant area. Many of the witnesses described the creature as having a humanoid shape, with large red eyes and wings, and some even reported seeing it with a glowing aura. These early sightings were the first indication of something strange happening in Point Pleasant. The locals who were not familiar with the creature were frightened and confused by the strange creature that had appeared in their town. The encounters were reported to the local authorities, but they were unable to find any concrete evidence of the creature. The sighting of Deputy Sheriff Millard Halstead, a respected member of the community, added credibility to the stories that were being told by the residents of Point Pleasant. His testimony helped to establish the Mothman as a real entity and not just a figment of people's imagination. Theories began to circulate that the government had been conducting secret experiments in the area, and the Mothman was a result of these experiments. Many pointed to the presence of the TNT storage facility, located just a few miles from Point Pleasant, as evidence of the government's involvement. The facility, which was used to store and manufacture explosives during World War II, had been closed for several years before the Mothman sightings began. However, rumors persisted that the government was still using the facility for secret experiments. Some believe that the Mothman was a product of these experiments, possibly a genetically engineered weapon, or even an alien being. Others point to the history of the area as evidence of the government's interest in the region. The TNT storage facility was just one of several military bases and facilities located in the area, including the McClintic Wildlife Station, a government-owned wildlife research facility, and the Gallipolis Locks and Dam, a government-owned hydroelectric power plant. Theories about the government's role in the Mothman sightings were further fueled by reports of strange lights and sounds coming from the TNT storage facility at night. Many believed that these were signs of secret experiments being conducted at the facility, and that the Mothman was somehow connected to these experiments. Some even suggested that the creature was being used as a test subject for new weapons or technology. As the Mothman sightings continued in Point Pleasant, the local residents became increasingly concerned about the strange creature that had appeared in their town. Many of them organized search parties in an attempt to find the creature and learn more about it. One of the most notable of these search parties was led by a local businessman, Marcella Bennett, who organized a group of volunteers to search the TNT area, where the creature had been spotted multiple times. The group searched the area for several days, but they were unable to find any evidence of the creature. Another search party was organized by a local resident, Mary Heyer, who was also a reporter for the Athens Messenger. She and her group searched the area around her home in hopes of finding the creature. They too were unable to find any evidence of the Mothman. The search parties were not only organized by the locals, but also by the authorities. The local sheriff's department sent out patrols to search for the creature, but they were unable to find any concrete evidence of the Mothman. Despite the lack of success in finding the creature, the search parties were important that they showed the level of concern and interest that the local residents had in the Mothman. It also demonstrated their commitment to trying to understand the strange creature that had appeared in their town. The involvement of the local residents also helped to bring attention to the Mothman sightings and helped to establish the creature as a real entity and not just a figment of people's imagination. The search parties were widely covered in the media and helped to bring the Mothman to the attention of a wider audience. The search parties also served as a way for the local residents to come together and share their experiences and concerns about the Mothman. It was a way for them to feel like they were taking an active role in trying to understand the phenomenon that was happening in their town. The search parties were a pivotal moment in the Mothman legend, as they marked the point at which the creature transitioned from being a local phenomenon to being a national one. The search parties were covered by national media and helped to bring the Mothman legend to the attention of the whole country.
Despite the lack of physical evidence, the Mothman was soon on the front page of newspapers, and soon the whole country was talking about the strange creature that was being seen in Point Pleasant. The story of the Mothman in Point Pleasant would end in one of the most tragic events in American history, the collapse of the Silver Bridge. On December 15, 1967, the Silver Bridge, which connected Point Pleasant, West Virginia to Gallipolis, Ohio, collapsed during rush hour traffic, killing 46 people. The collapse of the bridge was a devastating blow to the community and had a profound impact on the legend of the Mothman. Many believe that the Mothman was a warning of the impending disaster. Eyewitnesses reported seeing the creature in the days leading up to the collapse, and some even claimed that the Mothman had appeared to them in visions and dreams, foretelling the tragedy. The sudden stop of Mothman sightings after the collapse further added to the belief that the creature was connected to the event. John Keel, the researcher and journalist who wrote the Mothman prophecies, also believed that the Mothman was connected to the collapse of the Silver Bridge. In his book, Keel wrote that the Mothman was a menace and a harbinger of doom. He believed that the creature was trying to communicate something to the people of Point Pleasant, but they were unable to understand its message. The collapse of the Silver Bridge was a turning point in the Mothman legend. The creature, which had previously been the subject of curiosity and fascination, now became associated with death and tragedy. The Mothman sightings, which had been frequent, suddenly stopped, and the legend faded into obscurity. However, in recent years there has been renewed interest in the Mothman legend and its connection to the Silver Bridge collapse. The Mothman Museum in Point Pleasant has a section dedicated to the collapse and its connection to the creature. Researchers have also revisited the incident and have examined the possibility that the collapse was caused by a design flaw and not by the Mothman. The Silver Bridge collapse remains one of the deadliest bridge disasters in American history, and its connection to the Mothman legend has only added to its mystique and intrigue. The bridge was rebuilt and renamed the Silver Memorial Bridge in memory of the 46 people who lost their lives in the collapse. The government's response to the collapse of the Silver Bridge only fueled suspicions of a cover-up. The official cause of the collapse was said to be a design defect, but many argue that this was too convenient an explanation. Some believe that the government had known about the defect, but had chosen to ignore it, in order to avoid costly repairs. The Mothman sightings continued for several more years, with many of the encounters taking place in close proximity to military bases and other government facilities. Some believe that the Mothman was being used as a test subject for secret government experiments, while others thought it was being used as a weapon. One of the most compelling theories about the Mothman and the government cover-up involves the men in black. According to this theory, the Men in Black, a group of mysterious figures said to intimidate and silence those who have had encounters with the paranormal, are government agents tasked with covering up the existence of the Mothman. Many of the people who had reported sightings of the creature claimed to have been visited by the Men in Black, who warned them not to speak of their encounters. Despite the many theories and suspicions, the truth about the Mothman and the government cover-up remains a mystery. The government has never officially acknowledged the existence of the creature or any experiments or cover-up related to it. But for the residents of Point Pleasant and those who have had encounters with the Mothman, the truth is out there and they will stop at nothing to uncover it. John Keel was a man on a mission, driven by a desire to uncover the truth behind the mysterious creature that had been spotted in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. He traveled to Point Pleasant and was present for many of the sightings experiencing the phenomena firsthand. As he delved deeper into his investigation, he encountered strange occurrences and mysterious figures. The Men in Black, a group of ominous-looking individuals, visited him and other witnesses, warning them not to speak of their encounters with the creature. Keel himself received several visits from the Men in Black, who would appear unannounced at his hotel room, trying to intimidate him into silence. Another eerie experience Keel had, was a series of bizarre phone calls that he received while in Point Pleasant. The calls came at all hours and were often made by individuals who claimed to have information about the Mothman. Keel described the calls as being otherworldly in nature. Some were made in languages he couldn't understand. Keel also experienced strange happenings around him. For example, his car would stall or malfunction when he was near certain areas or buildings where Mothman sightings had been reported. He also reported that his watch and other electronic devices would stop working or malfunction in these areas. He also came across several individuals who claimed to have psychic abilities or connections to the supernatural. These people often provided him with information about the Mothman that he couldn't have known otherwise, leading him to believe that there might be some truth to their claims. 
One of the most striking observations he made was the pattern he discovered in the Mothman sightings. He noticed that the sightings often occurred in close proximity to locations that had been used for military or government purposes, such as the TNT storage facility and the Gallipolis locks and dam. This led him to believe that the Mothman could be connected to secret government experiments or activities. Keel also noted that Mothman appeared shortly after the Woodrow Derenberger UFO encounter. According to accounts, Woodrow Derenberger, a resident of West Virginia, had an encounter with a strange, inhuman figure in the early 1960s. The creature, which he called Indrid Cold, was said to be tall and thin with a pale face and large, staring eyes. Derenberger claimed that Indrid Cold had the ability to appear and disappear suddenly, and he reported feeling a sense of dread or unease in its presence. Derenberger's encounter with Indrid Cold occurred on November 2, 1966, as he was driving home from work, his car was suddenly overtaken by a flying object, which hovered over him. Out of the craft emerged Indrid Cold, who communicated with Derenberger telepathically. Indrid Cold informed him that he was from the planet Langulos and that his people were observing the Earth. The encounter lasted around 15 minutes and ended with the creature's craft disappearing into the sky. Keel was also witness to multiple strange lights in the sky over Point Pleasant and connected these sightings to Derenberger's mysterious encounter as well as sightings of the Mothman and the Men in Black. In 1975, he published The Mothman Prophecies, a book that would forever change the way the world viewed the strange creature that had been spotted in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. His book presented a unique perspective on the Mothman legend. He argued that the creature was not just a physical being, but also a supernatural entity that had been appearing throughout history in different cultures and under different names. He believed that the Mothman was a harbinger of doom and that its appearances were connected to tragic events such as the Silver Bridge Collapse. Keel's book was groundbreaking in that it presented a comprehensive and detailed analysis of the Mothman phenomena. It included interviews with the first witnesses, Roger and Linda Scarberry, and the testimony of Deputy Sheriff Millard Halstead, as well as a physical description of the creature. The Mothman prophecies played a key role in popularizing the legend and bringing it to the attention of a wider audience. Keel's theories and interpretations of the Mothman have been both celebrated and criticized, but his book remains a seminal work on the subject and continues to be widely read and studied. With the publication of the Mothman prophecies, the legend of the Mothman was no longer just a local phenomenon, but a phenomenon of national and even international interest. Keel's book brought the Mothman legend to the masses, and to this day, it remains a popular subject of conversation among enthusiasts and researchers of the paranormal. The Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant have generated a wide range of theories about the creature's origin. One of the most popular theories is that the Mothman is a misidentification of a sandhill crane. Sandhill cranes are large birds that can stand up to four feet tall and have a wingspan of up to seven feet. They are known to migrate through the Point Pleasant area, and some argue that the Mothman sightings could be explained by people mistaking sandhill cranes for the creature. Another theory is that the Mothman is an undiscovered species. Some argue that the creature could be a previously unknown animal, possibly a form of bird or bat. This theory is supported by the Mothman's ability to fly and the presence of wings in the descriptions provided by the witnesses. There are also those who argue that the Mothman is a supernatural being or even an extraterrestrial. The creature's large red eyes, humanoid shape, and the fact that it was seen in the area of an abandoned World War II munitions plant have led some to believe that it may be a supernatural being. One of the most commonly cited explanations is that of mass hallucinations. The idea is that, due to the high levels of stress and anxiety that were present in Point Pleasant in the 1960s, people's minds may have conjured up the image of the Mothman as a way to cope with their fears. This theory is supported by the fact that many of the reported sightings occurred in groups, with multiple people claiming to have seen the creature at the same time. Some experts suggest that the Mothman sightings may have been related to the phenomenon of crisis apparitions, where people who are going through a traumatic event or a crisis may see supernatural or paranormal creatures. Finally, some have proposed that the Mothman sightings may have been caused by a combination of factors, including mass hallucinations, misidentification of known animals, and even hoaxes. While none of these theories have been proven, they all offer a possible explanation for the Mothman's origin. Each theory has its own set of supporters and detractors, and the true origin of the Mothman remains a mystery. Theories about the Mothman's origin are not just limited to scientific explanations, but also includes cultural, supernatural, or even extraterrestrial explanations. 
The diverse range of theories surrounding the Mothman's origin is reflective of the enduring nature of the legend and its ability to captivate people's imagination. The connection between the Mothman and indigenous folklore, specifically the Thunderbird legend, is a subject of much debate among researchers and enthusiasts. The Thunderbird is a legendary creature found in the folklore of many indigenous cultures, including the Native American tribes of North America. The creature is often described as a large bird-like creature with powerful wings and the ability to create thunder and lightning. The similarities between the Mothman and the Thunderbird are striking. Both are described as large-winged creatures with a humanoid shape, and both are said to have large red eyes. The connection between the Mothman and the Thunderbird is also supported by the fact that the Mothman sightings coincided with the rise of UFO sightings in the Point Pleasant area. Some believe that the Mothman could be a form of extraterrestrial being and that its connection to the Thunderbird legend is evidence of this. The connection between the Mothman and indigenous folklore is also supported by the fact that the Mothman was seen in the area of an abandoned World War II munitions plant. The munitions plant was built on land that was once sacred to the indigenous people, and some believe that the Mothman's appearance in this area could be connected to the desecration of this sacred land. Despite the similarities between the Mothman and the Thunderbird, there are also those who argue that the connection between the two is purely coincidental. They argue that the similarities between the Mothman and the Thunderbird could be explained by cultural diffusion, the idea that similar beliefs and legends can be found in different cultures around the world. The connection between the Mothman and the Thunderbird is not just limited to the physical similarities between the two creatures. It also brings to light the spiritual and cultural significance of the Thunderbird in indigenous folklore. The Thunderbird is often seen as a powerful and benevolent creature, and its connection to the Mothman adds a layer of intrigue and mystery to the legend. The idea that the creature is connected to indigenous folklore, specifically the Thunderbird legend, adds a new dimension to the Mothman legend and its significance in American folklore. It is also a reminder of the importance of preserving indigenous culture and heritage. The Mothman legend is also closely associated with UFOs and extraterrestrial sightings. The first Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant occurred in 1966 during a time when there was a significant increase in UFO sightings in the area. Many people began to associate the Mothman with UFOs and extraterrestrial activity. The connection between the Mothman and UFOs was further strengthened by the fact that many of the witnesses who reported seeing the Mothman also reported seeing UFOs. This led some to believe that the Mothman was an extraterrestrial being, or even a form of alien spacecraft. The association between the Mothman and UFO also led to the rise of conspiracy theories surrounding the creature. Some believe that the government was covering up the existence of the Mothman and that the creature was being used for secret military or government research. Despite the association between the Mothman and UFOs, there are also those who argue that the connection is purely coincidental. They argue that the increase in UFO sightings in the area during the time of the Mothman sightings could be explained by a phenomenon known as mass hysteria, where people's fear and anxiety about a particular event leads to an increase in reported sightings. The connection between Mothman and UFOs has also led to the rise of conspiracy theories, and it's highlighted the public's fascination with UFOs and extraterrestrial activity. While the link between the Mothman and UFO is still debated by researchers and enthusiasts, it remains a significant aspect of the Mothman legend. The Mothman sightings in Point Pleasant began to decline in 1967, after the collapse of the Silver Bridge. John Keel, the author of The Mothman Prophecies, argued that the Mothman was a harbinger of doom and that the creature had appeared in Point Pleasant to warn of the impending disaster. Keel believed that the Mothman sightings had stopped because its warning had been heeded and that the creature had fulfilled its purpose. Others argue that the decline in Mothman sightings was simply a result of the shift in focus that the bridge collapse had brought to the area. After such a tragic event, interest in paranormal forces took a backseat to the more practical concerns of grieving and establishing a sense of normalcy. Despite the decline in Mothman sightings after the collapse of the Silver Bridge, interest in the creature has continued to endure. In the 21st century, there has been a resurgence of interest in the Mothman legend, with many people flocking to Point Pleasant to learn more about the creature. One of the key factors that has contributed to this resurgence of interest is the opening of the Mothman Museum in Point Pleasant. The museum, which opened in 2002, is dedicated to preserving the history of the Mothman legend and educating people about the creature. The museum features exhibits on the Mothman's physical characteristics, the history of the sightings, and the theories surrounding the creature's origin. It also features artifacts from the Silver Bridge Collapse. 
The Mothman Museum has been a major tourist attraction, drawing visitors from all over the country. People come to learn more about the creature and to explore the history of the Mothman legend. The resurgence of interest in the Mothman has also been reflected in popular culture. The 2002 film The Mothman Prophecies, which was based on John Keel's book and starred Richard Gere, brought renewed attention to the legend and sparked further interest in the creature. This led to more books, documentaries, podcasts, and articles being produced on the subject, which further fuel public interest. The Mothman has also been featured in a variety of television shows, including The X-Files and Supernatural. In these shows, the creature is often depicted as a mysterious and ominous figure, adding to its mystique and allure. The Mothman has also been featured in a variety of literature, including novels, comics, and graphic novels. These works often depict the creature as a supernatural being, adding to its allure and mystique. The Mothman has also been featured in a variety of video games, such as Fallout 3 and Fallout 76, where the creature is featured as a hostile creature that players must fight. In addition, the Mothman has been featured in many documentaries, podcasts, and articles, which have further fueled public interest in the creature. The representation of the Mothman in popular culture has added to the creature's mystique and has helped to keep the legend alive. The creature has become an iconic figure in American folklore, and its image has been used in a variety of different contexts. The Mothman Festival, held annually in Point Pleasant since 2002, is another event that has contributed to the resurgence of interest in the creature. The festival features guest speakers, live music, and vendors selling Mothman-related merchandise. It has become a major draw for Mothman enthusiasts and tourists alike. The resurgence of interest in the Mothman in the 21st century is a testament to the enduring nature of the legend. Despite the decline in sightings, the creature continues to captivate people's imagination and has become an important part of American folklore. One of the key elements that sets the Mothman apart from other legendary creatures is its connection to real-life events. The reported sightings of the Mothman in West Virginia in the 1960s coincided with a time of great stress and anxiety in the community. The collapse of the Silver Bridge in 1967, which claimed the lives of 46 people, added to the sense of unease and uncertainty. It's possible that the Mothman legend served as a way for people to make sense of the tragedy and to cope with their fears. The Mothman legend also speaks to our innate curiosity and desire to understand the unknown. Despite the lack of concrete evidence for the creature's existence, people have continued to search for answers and to speculate about its origins. Whether it's theories about the Mothman being an undiscovered species or a supernatural being, the legend has sparked the imagination of many and continues to inspire new interpretations and explanations. The Mothman legend also reflects the role of the media in shaping our perceptions of the world around us. The coverage of the Mothman sightings in newspapers and magazines in the 1960s helped to popularize the legend and to create a sense of urgency around the search for the creature. The media has also played a role in shaping the way that the Mothman is depicted in popular culture, from the Mothman prophecies book and movie, to references in film, television, and literature. Ultimately, the Mothman legend is a reminder that our understanding of the world is shaped by a combination of facts and fiction, science, and folklore. It tells us that even in the face of uncertainty, we will always seek answers and try to make sense of the world around us. The Mothman phenomena is not just a story or a legend, it's a window into the human psyche, a reflection of our innate curiosity and desire to understand the unknown. The Chupacabra, a creature of mystery and legend, shrouded in secrecy and fear. For years, stories of this mysterious beast have captivated the minds of people all over the world. But what exactly is the Chupacabra? And where did these tales of terror come from? The history of the Chupacabra is as elusive as the creature itself. But one thing is certain, the Chupacabra is no ordinary monster. It's a mystery that has spanned decades, and a legend that has sparked the imagination of people everywhere. From its earliest reported sightings to the present day, the Chupacabra has remained one of the most mysterious and controversial creatures in the world of cryptozoology. This is a story of the Chupacabra, a tale of mystery, fear, and imagination. A journey into the unknown to explore the legends and stories that have made the Chupacabra one of the most enduring and fascinating creatures in modern times. From its descriptions to its origins, from its impact on society to its scientific explanations, we will delve deep into the world of the Chupacabra and uncover the truth behind this legendary monster. So buckle up as we embark on a journey into the unknown and unravel a mystery of the Chupacabra.
The legend of the chupacabra has been around for over 25 years. The first reported sightings of the creature were in Puerto Rico in the mid-1990s, when farmers began to report strange and mysterious animal attacks on their livestock. These attacks were characterized by large, circular wounds, leading many to believe that a strange and powerful predator was to blame. Reports of animal attacks and mysterious deaths of livestock began to spread quickly, with local farmers blaming the chupacabra for the strange occurrences. From Puerto Rico, the legend of the chupacabra spread rapidly throughout the Caribbean and Latin America, with reports of sightings in countries such as Mexico, Venezuela, and Chile. As the legend of the chupacabra continued to grow, reports of the creature began to reach the United States, with sightings being reported in Texas, Arizona, and Florida. The sightings in the United States generated significant media attention, with news outlets and cable networks covering the story extensively. The chupacabra was soon being referred to as the Latin American monster and the goat sucker, due to its habit of allegedly attacking and draining the blood from livestock such as goats and cattle. In Texas, reports of the chupacabra began to surface in the early 2000s. Eyewitness accounts described a large, dog-like creature with spiky hair and glowing eyes. In 2007, a rancher near San Antonio claimed it had shot and killed a chupacabra that was attacking his goats. The creature was later identified as a large coyote, but the incident fueled further speculation about the existence of the chupacabra. In Russia, the chupacabra is known as the Vlak, and stories about this creature go back for decades. In recent years, reports of strange animal attacks and mysterious creatures in the countryside have led many Russians to believe that the Vlak is real and still roaming the countryside. In other parts of the world, including Australia and South Africa, reports of strange, blood-sucking creatures have led many to believe that the chupacabra is a global phenomenon. However, despite the numerous reports of sightings and attacks, there was little concrete evidence to support the existence of the chupacabra. Many of the reported sightings were based on anecdotal accounts and rumors, and there were no concrete scientific explanations for the strange occurrences. This lack of evidence led some to question the validity of the chupacabra legend, and to suggest that the creature may simply be a myth or hoax. In recent years, chupacabra sightings have continued to be reported, leading some to believe that the creature is still roaming the earth. Some claim to have seen the creature, describing it as a strange dog-like creature with spikes or fur along its back, large fangs, and glowing red eyes. Others have reported strange, mutilated animal corpses, believed to be the work of the chupacabra. But with no concrete evidence of the creature's existence, many remain skeptical. Despite these doubts, the legend of the chupacabra continued to grow, with new reports of sightings and attacks appearing regularly in the media. The mysterious and frightening nature of the chupacabra captured the imagination of people around the world, and the creature became a cultural icon, appearing in movies, television shows, and popular books. The chupacabra, also known as the goat sucker, is said to be a strange and mysterious creature that roams the night and attacks livestock, such as goats, sheep, and chickens. It is described as a canine-like animal with powerful hind legs, sharp claws, and piercing red eyes. The creature is said to be covered in a mixture of fur and scales, with a row of spikes running down its spine. According to reports, it stands around four to five feet tall and has a pronounced jaw, which it uses to drain the blood of its prey. Over the years, the appearance of the chupacabra has been described in many different ways, with some reports claiming that it is a large reptilian creature while others describe it as a smaller dog-like creature with bat-like wings. Despite the varying descriptions, the one constant factor is the chupacabra's reputation as a bloodthirsty predator. Some say that its purpose is to feed on the blood of livestock, while others believe that it may be part of a larger, more sinister plot to terrorize communities. Regardless of its true motives, the chupacabra has become one of the most feared and infamous creatures in modern folklore. One of the most widely accepted explanations for the sightings of the chupacabra is that the creature is simply a case of misidentification. Some experts believe that the chupacabra is actually a type of known animal, such as a coyote or wild dog, that has been affected by disease or parasites, causing it to have a strange appearance. Others believe that the chupacabra is a hybrid animal, created by crossbreeding of different species, that has been released into the wild. However, some researchers believe that the chupacabra is a creature that has always existed and has simply remained elusive to scientists and researchers, they point to the consistent reports of the creature over the years, with sightings reported in many different parts of the world. Many of these sightings describe a similar appearance of the creature, with its characteristic spiky back and fangs, leading some to believe that it may be a species that has been previously unknown to science. 
Another explanation for the chupacabra sightings is that the creature is the result of extraterrestrial intervention or manipulation. Proponents of this theory believe that the chupacabra may be a genetic hybrid created by aliens or a form of experimental animal that has been released into the wild. The origin of the chupacabra legend is still shrouded in mystery. Some believe it to be a result of a mixture of cultural beliefs and fear of the unknown. In Puerto Rico, where the first sightings of the chupacabra were reported, the legend may have originated from traditional stories of El Vampiro, a blood-sucking monster that was said to terrorize livestock. This legend was combined with tales of strange animal attacks and fear of a new and unknown species that could cause so much destruction. Others point to possible connections between the chupacabra and ancient pre-Columbian beliefs in shape-shifting creatures. There are reports of similar creatures being seen in different parts of the world, suggesting that the legend of the chupacabra may have roots in multiple cultures and regions. Additionally, some have linked the chupacabra to scientific experiments gone wrong, such as genetic engineering or military testing. This theory suggests that the chupacabra is a product of human manipulation rather than a naturally occurring creature. However, there is no concrete evidence to support these claims. The folklore and mythology surrounding the chupacabra is rich and varied, with roots in cultures and regions all over the world. In Puerto Rico, where the first sightings of the chupacabra were reported, local folklore describes the creature as a powerful and frightening monster that attacks livestock and drinks their blood. The name chupacabra comes from the Spanish words chupar, which means to suck, and cabra, which means goat. This association with goats and other livestock is a common thread in chupacabra legends across many cultures. In some regions, the chupacabra is believed to be a supernatural creature with powers and abilities beyond those of mere mortals. Others describe it as a hybrid of different animals with features of both a dog and a reptile. Despite these variations, many chupacabra legends feature the creature as a formidable and terrifying opponent, capable of inflicting serious harm on livestock and humans alike. In Latin America, chupacabra stories often take on a more regional and cultural flavor, reflecting the different beliefs and legends of the indigenous populations of each area. For example, in Mexico, the chupacabra is sometimes associated with the Aztec god Zolotl, who was believed to have the power to bring death and disease. In other areas, the chupacabra is said to be the result of genetic experimentation gone wrong or the result of a supernatural curse. As the chupacabra legend gained popularity, it quickly became clear that it was having a significant impact on society. In many areas where chupacabra sightings were reported, people began to panic, with many fearful for their lives and the lives of their livestock. Local authorities and animal control organizations were inundated with calls from concerned citizens, and in some cases, entire communities were thrown into chaos. The chupacabra also sparked a great deal of media coverage, with journalists and reporters flocking to the areas where sightings were reported to get a first-hand look at the creature and the impact it was having on local communities. Despite the frenzied coverage and panic, the chupacabra remained an elusive and mysterious creature, with many people continuing to believe in its existence. However, as the years went by, the scientific community began to take a closer look at the chupacabra legend, with many researchers and experts attempting to shed light on what was really behind the strange creature's sightings. Some of the more credible explanations for the chupacabra phenomenon include misidentifications of known animals, hoaxes and fabrications, and psychological factors such as mass hysteria and collective imagination. One scientific explanation for chupacabra sightings is the misidentification of animals. Many reports of chupacabra sightings have been found to be related to animals such as coyotes, foxes, and dogs suffering from mange, a skin disease that causes hair loss and a change in appearance. In these cases, the animal's abnormal appearance, often caused by a parasitic infection, has led people to believe they have seen the chupacabra. Additionally, some experts believe that some chupacabra sightings could be hoaxes or fabrications, created for attention or as pranks. This is supported by the fact that many chupacabra reports lack physical evidence or solid proof, and some of the supposed chupacabra specimens that have been presented as evidence have been shown to be fake or staged. Another explanation is that chupacabra sightings could be caused by psychological factors such as mass hysteria or collective imagination. The fear and excitement surrounding the chupacabra legend, as well as the media coverage and the spread of information through the internet and social media, could have caused people to imagine or misinterpret seeing the creature. In recent years, numerous individuals and organizations have claimed to have evidence of the chupacabra's existence. Some people have reported encounters with the creature, 
while others have claimed to have captured or killed it. In many cases, these claims have been met with skepticism, as they often lack concrete evidence or are easily explained by other factors. However, some researchers and experts believe that there may be some truth to the Chupacabra legends. They argue that the many similarities between accounts of the Chupacabra from different parts of the world suggest that there may be a real creature behind the legend. For example, many descriptions of the Chupacabra match that of a type of dog or wild canid, such as a coyote or a fox. Others describe it as a reptilian creature, similar to a reptile known as the Chukwala. Some scientists have suggested that these descriptions may be the result of misidentifications of known animals, especially when people are frightened or in low-light conditions. However, there are also cases where the cause of the livestock deaths and strange markings on the animals cannot be easily explained. In some instances, the livestock had puncture wounds that appear to have been made by fangs or sharp teeth, while others had multiple organ failures without any apparent cause. Some people argue that these strange occurrences suggest that there may be a mysterious creature responsible, although others attribute them to natural causes such as disease or predation. Ultimately, the evidence for and against the existence of the chupacabra is inconclusive. While some believe that the chupacabra is a real creature, others argue that it is nothing more than a legend created by fear and misinformation. Since the first reported sightings of the chupacabra in the 1990s, there have been numerous attempts to investigate the mysterious creature and uncover the truth about its existence. From amateur cryptozoologists to professional scientists, many individuals and organizations have dedicated time and resources to understanding the chupacabra. One of the first major chupacabra investigations took place in Puerto Rico in 1995, when reports of a mysterious predator killing livestock in the region began to surface. Local authorities, scientists, and wildlife experts conducted extensive studies of the affected areas and the remains of the animals, but their findings were inconclusive. Another notable investigation occurred in Texas in the late 1990s, where a series of sheep and goat mutilations were attributed to the chupacabra. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department conducted an investigation and determined that the deaths were caused by coyotes, but some locals remain convinced that the chupacabra was responsible. In more recent years, the advent of technology and improved methods of scientific investigation have allowed researchers to take a more in-depth look at the chupacabra. DNA analysis and testing of hair and tissue samples from supposed chupacabra sightings have been performed, with varying results. Some studies have found that the remains were from known animals such as coyotes or domestic dogs, while others have been unable to identify the species. In an effort to better understand the chupacabra and the stories surrounding it, a number of organizations and individuals have undertaken their own investigations. In 2007, American cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman conducted an investigation in Puerto Rico after a spate of chupacabra sightings and livestock mutilations. Using hair and tissue samples, Coleman and his team conducted DNA tests on supposed chupacabra specimens, which revealed that the creatures were actually wild canids, such as coyotes, suffering from a parasitic mange. Similarly, in 2010, a team of researchers from Texas A&M University conducted an investigation into chupacabra sightings in South Texas. The team collected physical evidence and conducted DNA tests on animal carcasses believed to be chupacabras, which also revealed that the creatures were simply diseased coyotes or feral dogs. While these findings provide some explanations for chupacabra sightings, they have not put an end to the mystery of the creature. The chupacabra legend is not limited to just one region or culture. Reports of similar creatures have been made in different countries and cultures around the world. For example, in Russia, there have been reports of a similar creature called the Volkodav or werewolf. In South America, there have been stories of a similar creature called the Munsua. The differences in the descriptions of these creatures vary, but the common theme is that they are blood-sucking creatures that attack and kill livestock. This suggests that the Chupacabra legend may have been influenced by cultural beliefs, folklore, and mythology. Since the first reported sightings of the chupacabra, it has captured the imagination of people all over the world and has been featured in countless works of popular culture and media. From movies to TV shows, books to comic books, the chupacabra has become a cultural icon of the unknown and the mysterious. In the late 1990s, a low-budget horror movie called Chupacabra Dark Seas was released, which depicted the creature as a monster that terrorizes a group of people on a yacht. The movie was a commercial failure, but it kickstarted the trend of chupacabra-themed entertainment. In 2005, a TV show called Monster Quest featured an episode about the chupacabra, 
which aimed to uncover the truth about the creature through a series of scientific investigations and experiments. The episode was highly popular and sparked a renewed interest in the chupacabra. Since then, numerous other TV shows, such as Destination Truth and Fact or Fate, Paranormal Files, have featured the chupacabra in their investigations. The chupacabra has also been featured in various comic books and graphic novels, such as The Chupacabra Ate the Candelabra and Chupacabra the Comic Book. In these works, the chupacabra is often depicted as a supernatural or extraterrestrial creature, rather than a natural one. This has contributed to the widespread belief in the chupacabra as a mysterious and otherworldly creature. The chupacabra has also been referenced in various video games, such as Resident Evil and Crypto Zoo Keeper. In these games, the chupacabra is often portrayed as a fearsome monster that players must defeat. This further reinforces the popular image of the chupacabra as a dangerous and terrifying creature. But why do people continue to be drawn to the story of the chupacabra? Perhaps it's because the chupacabra embodies a number of primal fears. Fear of the unknown, fear of the dark, and fear of the predator. These fears tap into the human psyche in a way that makes the chupacabra a powerful and enduring myth. The chupacabra also appeals to our love of the macabre and the supernatural. The idea of a blood-sucking monster roaming the countryside, preying on livestock, and possibly even humans, is the stuff of nightmares. It's no wonder that people are fascinated by the chupacabra and continue to search for evidence of its existence. At the same time, the chupacabra legend also speaks to our innate desire to explain the unknown. In a world full of mysteries, the idea of a creature like the chupacabra provides a convenient explanation for unexplained deaths and disappearances. It's a way of making sense of the world and filling in the gaps of our knowledge. Throughout the history of the chupacabra legend, there have been numerous hoaxes and instances of misinformation about the creature. From fake photos and videos to false reports of sightings, the internet has been a breeding ground for chupacabra-related hoaxes. One of the most famous chupacabra hoaxes was the so-called Elmendorf Beast, a hairless animal that was found dead in Texas in 2007. It was initially believed to be a chupacabra, but was later identified as a domestic dog with mange. Similarly, in 2004, a Puerto Rican man claimed to have captured a chupacabra and presented it to authorities, but it was later identified as a common raccoon with a skin condition. Another notable incident occurred in 2015, when a Texas resident claimed to have shot and killed a chupacabra in his backyard. The creature was described as having long, razor-sharp teeth, spiky hair, and a large, hairless body. Despite widespread media coverage, many experts and biologists disputed the authenticity of the claims, stating that the creature was likely a domestic dog or coyote with mange. These hoaxes and instances of misinformation have only added to the confusion and skepticism surrounding the chupacabra legend. They have also made it more difficult for serious researchers to investigate the chupacabra and find evidence of its existence. Additionally, sensationalist reporting on the chupacabra has sometimes resulted in panic and fear in local communities. One well-known example of media sensationalism surrounding the chupacabra is the 1997 episode of the popular TV show Unsolved Mysteries. This episode aired a reenactment of a supposed chupacabra attack on livestock in Puerto Rico, which many people believe helped to further popularize the legend of the chupacabra. The internet and social media have also had a profound impact on the spread of chupacabra legends. With the click of a button, stories of the creature can be shared across the globe in mere seconds. This has led to an increase in chupacabra sightings, as well as the spread of hoaxes and misinformation about the creature. In the early days of the internet, websites dedicated to cryptozoology and the paranormal sprang up, offering a platform for people to share their own encounters and experiences with the chupacabra. These sites also provided a space for enthusiasts to debate the existence of the creature and to explore various theories about its origin and behavior. However, the rapid spread of information on the internet also means that false stories and hoaxes can be easily perpetuated. For example, a photo of a stray dog with mange was shared on social media as evidence of a chupacabra, causing panic in local communities and adding fuel to the fire of the chupacabra legend. This demonstrates the power of the internet and social media to spread both information and misinformation about the chupacabra. The internet and social media have also given a platform to amateur researchers and amateur sleuths who claim to have discovered evidence of the chupacabra. From grainy photos of supposed chupacabra sightings to videos of animals with strange behavior, these pieces of evidence are often presented without scientific scrutiny or analysis. Believing in and spreading false chupacabra stories can have real-world consequences. 
For example, in some communities fear of the chupacabra has led to the killing of innocent animals who are suspected of being the creature. This has not only caused harm to these animals, but it has also contributed to the decline of local ecosystems and has had a negative impact on local wildlife populations. In addition, false stories about the chupacabra can also lead to the spread of fear and panic. For example, in the 1990s, stories about the chupacabra spread rapidly through Puerto Rico, causing widespread panic and leading to a decrease in the population of domestic livestock. This demonstrates the power of false stories to create real-world consequences and to disrupt local communities. The impact of the chupacabra legend on local communities and livestock populations has been significant and far-reaching. The fear of the chupacabra has caused panic and concern in many rural areas, where livestock is an important source of livelihood and income. Many farmers and ranchers have reported losses of livestock, which they attribute to attacks by the chupacabra. This has led to increased security measures and a greater focus on protecting their animals. But it has also led to an atmosphere of fear and mistrust in some communities. In some cases, the belief in the chupacabra has also led to vigilante justice, with individuals taking matters into their own hands and killing animals that they believe to be the chupacabra. This has led to further conflict and division in communities, as well as the loss of innocent animals that were misidentified as the chupacabra. The impact of the chupacabra legend on livestock populations has also had economic consequences, with some farmers reporting decreased profits due to reduced stock and increased expenses for security measures. Despite the fear and panic that the chupacabra legend has caused in some communities, it has also brought people together in their search for answers and a resolution to the problem. Many communities have formed support groups and organized searches for the chupacabra, which has helped to build a sense of camaraderie and unity. Additionally, the chupacabra legend has also brought attention to the issue of livestock loss and animal attacks, leading to increased efforts to understand and prevent these incidents. In recent years, there has been an increased focus on the use of modern technology and scientific methods in chupacabra investigations. This has included DNA analysis of alleged chupacabra specimens, as well as the use of infrared cameras and other advanced tools in searches for the creature. These efforts have been aimed at providing more concrete evidence for or against the existence of the chupacabra, and they have the potential to provide new insights into this mysterious and elusive creature. However, there are also challenges to the future of chupacabra research and investigations. The lack of clear evidence for the chupacabra continues to be a major barrier, and many researchers and investigators face skepticism and criticism from those who doubt the existence of the creature. Additionally, the impact of hoaxes and misinformation about the chupacabra continues to be a concern, as these false stories can cloud the understanding of the true nature of the creature. Throughout human history, we have created monsters and legends to explain the things that scare us, from the werewolves and vampires of folklore to the Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster of more recent times. In a sense, the chupacabra is a product of our collective psyche, a manifestation of our fears and anxieties, but it's also a testament to the power of imagination and the enduring appeal of mystery. The chupacabra may never be fully explained, and that's part of what makes it so intriguing. The story of the chupacabra is also a reminder of the importance of critical thinking and skepticism. While it's tempting to believe in legends and mysteries, it's essential to approach these stories with a healthy dose of doubt. As we've seen, there are many hoaxes and instances of misinformation surrounding the chupacabra. It's up to us to critically examine the evidence and separate truth from fiction. Finally, the chupacabra serves as a reminder of the impact that legends can have on local communities and even on our understanding of the natural world. The chupacabra is more than just a story. It's a symbol of the way that mystery and the unknown shape our beliefs and culture. In many ways, the chupacabra is a microcosm for the larger implications of all the legends and mysteries that capture our imagination. The chupacabra, in short, is a reflection of our deepest fears and anxieties, a symbol of our imagination and the power of mystery. It's a cautionary tale about the importance of critical thinking and the dangers of believing in false legends. And it's a testament to the enduring appeal of the unknown and the role that legends play in shaping our beliefs and culture. Bigfoot, Mothman, the Chupacabra, creatures that have captivated our imagination for generations. Whether they exist in reality or only in our minds, they continue to haunt us with their mystery and legend. Roaming the forests of the Pacific Northwest and the skies of West Virginia, they remain shrouded in secrecy, waiting to be discovered. The truth is out there. Don't look behind you. It may be closer than you think.